Many centuries before the Targaryen conquest of Westeros, the dragon lords of the Valyrian Freehold expanded from the Valyrian Peninsula to rule over all of Western Essos, defeating ancient, well-established civilizations to populate their own settlements, some of which were founded and governed independently of the homeland, retaining a status as free cities, able to choose their own leaders and administer their own affairs, while remaining under the purview and protection of Valyria. Though other cities of Western Essos earned great wealth and fame, such as Menteris, Voluntheris, Oros, Tyria, Draconis, Illyria, Misafer, Rios, and Aquosten, they were all governed directly by agents of the Freehold, and did not retain the influence and long-term viability of the nine free cities. When the Doom of Valyria destroyed the Freehold and broke apart the peninsula in 102 BC, Many eastern and western settlements, dependent on the homeland, were utterly destroyed throughout the century of blood that followed. Some of the few settlements to survive these bleeding years were the nine free cities of Essos, which nonetheless suffered many hardships and wars, but also adapted to the changing times, relying more heavily upon trade routes to their nearest neighbors like the Summer Isles and Westeros, with some of these city-states developing political and military ties to the Seven Kingdoms. The oldest of the free cities, Volantis, first daughter of Valyria, was founded as a western military outpost some time after the conquest of Old Gis in the east. Taking advantage of the protection offered from such a settlement, wealthy merchants used it as a trading post between the Valyrian Peninsula and Roinar city-states, growing increasingly wealthy in the following years. Emerging victorious in the Roinish Wars, the Freehold eventually wiped out their northern neighbor, leaving Volantis as the most influential and powerful city of the region. Following the doom of Valyria, Volantis considered itself the natural successor to the Freehold, sending a fleet to reconquer the shattered remnants of the Valyrian Peninsula, which then vanished in the Smoking Sea. Failing to assert their authority, Volantis next marched their armies and sailed another fleet to successfully conquer the free cities of Myr and Lys, before moving on to Tyrosh, where their dreams of expansion were crushed by the combined efforts of Tyrosh, the rebels of Lys, the rebels of Myr, the Stormlands of Westeros, the Targaryens of Dragonstone, Pentos and Bravos, as well as Kohor and Norvos, which allied to defeat them in the north. The Dothraki horse lords of central Lesos then took advantage of the chaos by raiding Valentine towns and villages in the east. Proud of their heritage, only those of Valyrian descent were permitted to live within the 200 foot walls of fused black stone, while others could only enter by invitation. Divisions such as these aided in creating a deep political divide between the prestigious, old money aristocracy and the new money merchant class, further displayed in their political parties, with the noble and military aligned tigers opposed to the merchant allied elephants. Ruled by three triarchs which each served a one year term, all freeborn landowners were eligible to vote in elections that were usually peaceful but involved aggressive campaigning and bribery. Inventing the famed board game Savas, the port of Volantis served as a lucrative gateway to Slaver's Bay and the Jade Sea in the east, trading heavily in slaves as well as silk, spices, sweet beets, and sweet red wine. A notable figure from Volantis was the fool Patchface, serving under King Stannis Baratheon, a mentally impaired man who may have possessed the gift of prophecy. Originally established by a long-forgotten people, the lands of Norvos were conquered by the Hairy Men, who were then driven out by the Roinar under Prince Garrus of Nysar. Yet in time, the Roinar abandoned the region, preferring the warmer climates of the south. Seeking to escape the religious tolerance of the Valyrian Peninsula, a sect of extremists following bearded priests migrated to this abandoned settlement and founded the city of Norvos. Pledging allegiance to the Freehold while retaining their own leadership structure, they established a strict theocracy administered by a council of magisters whose members were chosen by the bearded priests. Worshipping a mysterious god whose name was only revealed to initiates of the priesthood, the city came under threat from the Andals of the Lorathi Isles when King Carlon the Great attempted to expand his empire southward. Resisting conquest, the Norvosi contacted the Motherland, which sent a hundred dragons from Valyria to destroy the Andal King, his army, and his homeland in a massacre remembered as the Scouring of Lorath. During the Century of Blood, Norvos briefly allied with neighboring Kohor to win the battle on Dagger Lake, where they halted Valentine expansion into the north of Essos. Developing a unique society and culture, the Norvosi largely based their schedule around the ringing of three bells, which told them when to rise, sleep, work, pray, rest, take up arms, and have intimacy. As none but the priests could have beards, many men grew long mustaches, while women shaved their heads bald and wore wigs. 
Known to eat winter cakes and drink nasa, fermented goat's milk laced with honey, the Norvosi produced beautiful tapestries and engaged in trade with nearby cities like Lorath. Among the most well-known figures from Norvos was Ario Hota, captain of the guard for Prince Doran Martell of Dorne, as well as this ruler's wife, Lady Malario, mother to his three children, who was so appalled by the Westerosi custom of fostering children with another noble family, she grew estranged from her husband and eventually returned to her homeland. The northern free city of Lorath upon the Lorathi Isles was the smallest, poorest, and least populated of the nine free cities, yet was once a home to a mysterious ancient people, which built tall mazes out of carved stone. Expanding across the isles and onto mainland Essos to the south, the maze maker civilization eventually ended, allowing for the Harrymen to settle the islands until they too vanished, possibly driven out by the Andal people, expanding from the Axe across the north of Essos to the western coast. For many years, the Lorathi Isles were ruled by various competing Endo kings, until eventually conquered by Carlon the Great, who sought to expand his empire onto mainland Essos, winning a number of victories before encountering significant resistance from the free city Norvos. Reaching out for aid to the motherland of Old Valyria, the Dragon Lord sent a mighty host to destroy King Carlon and his army as they laid siege to the city. The Valyrians then pressed forward and destroyed all the king's holdings upon the Lorathi Isles in a brutal slaughter known as the Scouring of Lorath. Leaving no survivors, the islands remained abandoned for over a century until 1436 BC, when settled by a sect of highly religious Valyrians, who established a temple to the blind god Boash on the largest of the three main islands, which in time grew to become the free city Lorath. Building much of the settlement within the ancient stone mazes of the island, the eunuch priests of Boash ruled sternly while adhering to strict religious beliefs, like refusing to eat flesh or drink wine. Practicing self-abnegation, they did not allow slavery and were so extreme in their belief of equality, they denied their individuality in the language they used, describing themselves as a man or a woman instead of I or you. Though their religion did not persuade many to convert, their message of equality greatly resonated with outsiders, attracting escaped slaves and beleaguered freedmen, so that in time the followers of Boash were a minority. By about 700 BC, the ruling faction of religious priests grew so corrupt the people rebelled, establishing a new society and leadership structure headed by a harvest prince, fisher prince, and prince of the streets, though these were largely ceremonial positions as true authority rested with a council of magisters. Exporting salt cod, walrus tusks, seal skins, and whale oil, Lorath had few soldiers or warships and so largely remained isolationist in their ambitions, rarely interfering in the affairs of others while trading mostly with their nearest neighbors. A known figure from Lorath was the faceless assassin Jack and Hagar, who killed three men for Arya Stark and invited her to Bravos, where she might find the Temple of Black and White. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Xavier, Defender of the Flame, Dela Cruz the Freed, Lady J Book Nerd, and Edengruyer Spicy Sky Frugran. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.